Well, good afternoon, everyone. Today is June 9th. It is our 23rd show of the year. Ray, can you believe that? 23rd of the year already. Uh, I know. Time, we got, time is flying. It really is. We got, we got two great guests tonight. We got Tom Darling and Chuck Kovac. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we're going to have a great time tonight talking about, uh, you know, kind of interviewing those guys. Uh, uh, you know, we've been talking a little bit behind the screen uh, with uh, Chuck. He's in a green room eating some uh, – well, he's in a prop room. We don't have a green room. I think we got some shrimp and crawfish. Yeah. And uh, might have some New York style pizza back there for him. But yeah, I want to say, uh, you know, we, we have a Facebook page, guys. If you get a chance to, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, see some stuff there that we post and you can post stuff. So you're welcome to do that. And uh, I want to say congratulations, uh, of course, to Maddie and Ray, who was uh, subs of the month for Ready Set Drone with Kelly Shores. And I think uh, Maddie got his package today, Ray. I'm not sure if you got yours yet. But congratulations. I know y'all support a lot of channels and, and, and congratulations to y'all guys. And we'll give away some stickers tonight. I actually have a uh, remote pilot uh, 101 hook me up with a couple stickers. So we'll be giving away one of our stickers and one uh, remote pilot 101 tonight. So kind of a little something different. And, uh, and that's we'll a great that. course, also, right, Johnny? Oh, huh? Yeah, we'll do that. That's a great course. It helped you get your. Yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah. Uh, I, I reached out and uh, yeah, Madison, the girl over there, sent me some stickers. And actually, she did send us a T-shirt to give away. We'll probably give that away next month. So we'll, uh, we'll you know, they were really helpful. And, and we'll give away stickers for the next few weeks. And, uh, you know, it's it's a it's the same size as our Fly for Fun sticker. And uh, we do have our part 107 uh, questions that we're going to go through uh, we do, we do three for the uh, night, and we keep up uh, with the correct answer for the month. And right now, Matt, JC, and Chuck all have one correct answer. Now, Chuck won't be eligible tonight because his answer will pop up too quick in the chat. So he'll have to uh, he'll have to kind of just sit back and answer the yeah. question on his own. But uh, Captain Ray, uh, you know, uh, how was your week? I, I I know you put up a video today, and we'll show it in a few minutes. I'll give you a, give some. Uh, you were you were doing two things you like kay kayaking and flying your drone the same day, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, no, it was good. You know, I'm having another good week. You know, same old aches and pains, but uh, you know, I'm having a good week. And yeah, today uh, I I did a little kayaking and uh, air two flying. Right. I was watching uh, Billy Kyle's video this morning, and he put up a a great video on on active track. And it just inspired me. I said, I'm going to go try it. I've never really tried it. And I said, I'm going to try it while I'm kayaking. <laughs> and uh, I went down to Mount Sinai Harbor where I keep my kayak. And uh, I gave it a try. And I was just so nervous. I really was, you know. Yeah, well, I, I was just, thinking. I, I didn't want to. It to end up in the bottom of the harbor, <laughs> right? You sent me a video, and uh, you know, before you sent me a few pictures, I was thinking, I said, Man, I, I wasn't so worried about the drone, but I said, Well, if Captain Ray hits the water with the remote control, that's that's about the same as crashing the drone, but uh, unless it would, I guess it would return to home if you took off from, from the shore, so that might not be a bad thing. Well, Captain, yeah, I wanna, yeah, I, did, I, did, I actually, yeah, that's what I was just gonna do, I was gonna welcome the people yeah, in go the ahead, please. We got a great, great crowd in. JC Flying was the first one in. Yeah. And uh, Michael, Fly Zone, how you doing? And uh, Jody, Joey's, Jody's always supporting everybody. Drone, drone shots, good to see you. Sammy Burns, all the way out in California. Bill Ronane, down in <laughs> Florida. And uh, Michael Wright in Texas. We got a great crowd. And I'm going through the list here, you know. And we got somebody from Ireland, Thomas. How you doing, Thomas? Yeah, Thomas. yeah he's a great, he's a boy. Eddie Welcome. Nunez, Steve. Is... I know. Um, you, you say the names a lot faster than I do. <laughs> and Leonard, JSK, good to see you. So anyway, we'll, we'll get on to more names. Angela, Lost Girl Hikes, Jerry Bauer, and Marcus. Marcus is in the house. How you doing, Marcus? Welcome in, Marcus. And if I've skipped over anybody, I apologize, but I see Brad, Brad Alston also. But uh, it's great. We appreciate you guys watching the show on a Wednesday night. Johnny and I, you know, we talk about flying for fun. And tonight we, we, we have two great guests. And uh, I, I don't know who's in the green room now, <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to 
introduce Chuck, right? Well, well actually, him... yeah, actually, Tom just popped in, so we, we all right. Come in, but but Ray, if you want, uh, let's uh, let's show a little bit of your video. You mind if I show a little bit of your video that you no, shot no, today? That would be nice. It, yeah, it would be good. It Tom, was Tom just back there, he can enjoy himself on the shrimp and crawfish and uh, New York style pizza there that, that Chuck's if Chuck hadn't ate it all, but uh, we'll we'll see. Let's see here. And I and I'll have to say, you don't know how nervous I was trying to do that. <laughs> I mean, I love kayaking, but flying a drone from a kayak is a little nerve wracking. It really is. And if anybody's tried it, they know what I'm talking about. Long Island, New York, and we're gonna go to Cedar Beach and do a little kayaking and air to flying. But Ray, you didn't you didn't get a chance to act this track though, right? No, no, no. As soon as, as soon as I, I was taking off, going up, I got the manned aircraft warning, and I had to bring it right back down, and it, it just threw me all off. And it was a low flying military helicopter. That's what you said, yeah. A gunship, actually. <laughs> no, that ain't good. <laughs> but uh, beautiful place. It is. Cedar Beach in Mount Sinai is really a really a nice location to kayak. There's a big marina there. The fishing is great. And you know, not too many fly not too many people fly drones there, but I do. But not over people or over moving boats, of course. Right. Of course. You well, know, not a hundred miles an hour each, either. No, no. <laughs> but uh it was really, really, really a great day. Well, hey, that's doing when you can do two. And then, there's the case. Yeah, that's look, my case. You know, my son oh, gave me that case. Sticker. And uh, the drone survived because I have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> but the Air Two is really a great drone. It really is. I uh, I love it. You know, I got you know the Air Two S also, and. Uh, I love that drone, but I wanted to give the Air 2 a try today, and it was fun. So, But again, as soon as I took off, I got the manned aircraft warning, and I had to bring it right back down to a lower level. Yeah, pretty place. It is. Mount Sinai Harbor is nice. I think Wait, I did. How far, that, how far oh. is that from your house? 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 20 minutes. It's pretty close. There you are. Yeah. And it was good. You know, I got a little exercise today. And I know I'm doing a voiceover, but I forget exactly uh, what I was saying. You know, you forget. <laughs> so I'll just, just do a live voiceover. Yeah. But the fishing right there is great. In really? the back, back of the harbor there. There's striped bass, there's bluefish. The fish were jumping around me while I was out there. That's what you said, yeah. Well, it looks like, so, well, yeah, I, uh, great, little, great little video. And, uh, you know, y'all can, uh, of course, y'all can check it out. Uh, every yeah. channel. His, his link's in the, the, uh, in the description, of course. And, of course, our two uh, guests, their, uh, the script, their link to their uh, channel is in the uh, description of the show. And, uh, Ray, if we want to do... Uh, Let's do a uh, sticker giveaway. Yep. Uh, before we bring Tom in, and we'll do, the, do we'll do the first question. Which one are you giving away first? Ours we or gonna give one, remote we're gonna pilot? Give one of each. We got a remote pilot 101 sticker, and we have a fly for fun sticker. Yep. So uh, we'll we'll do. Uh, they'll they'll receive one of each. Oh, look at this! They're, they're putting in the numbers already. They know. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, well, we got the number Ray kind of watch for. Yeah. All right. And that, that'll be, it'll be a something different. That remote pilot 101 did hook me up with some stickers and, uh, like I say, some, some goodies to give away. So we'll be giving away those. Uh, uh I know a lot of people had the fun, a fly for fun show sticker and, uh, they look really great on the, uh, the somebody, was, somebody was very, very close. Actually, one off. <laughs> How you doing, Chris Hope? Good to see you. Bob M. Good to see you. And, uh, we love giving away the stickers, and uh, I know people love receiving them. But uh, sometimes it's hard to get that number. 
I'm going to give him a hint. It's under 30. Up, oh, up. Oh, I see it. I see it. No, no, no. I thought I saw it. No. <laughs> <Got> it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody, yes, it will. We'll, uh, we'll continue. Let's, let's, I know, uh, I know. You know, I, I love it. I love it when, uh, Sean, Sean Oz does this with his, with his numbers <laughs> and his sticker giveaway, too. Jody, I, I think Jody's up, all around it. Up, I see it. I see it. Jody, Jody, I think Jody got it. Yeah, Jody had it. <laughs> Congratulations, Jody. Congratulations, Jody. And we'll put the first question up, uh, and then we'll, we'll introduce Tom. Tom's sitting back there. Which of the following individuals, you got to read the question. It's a simple question. It was on my test I took. Which of the following individuals may process an application for Part 107 Remote Pilot with an SUAS rating? A commercial balloon pilot? You throw that answer out, just as a hint. B, a remote pilot in command, or C, a designated pipe pilot examiner? Easy question, but it was yeah. on the yeah. Yeah. Somebody, we'll see. See who gets it. Brad Austin. Oh, yeah. oh Brad, I, that's the wrong. Sammy Byrne. Right, look, look, look who got it. I think we got a correct answer already. No, no, no I think. Uh, Sam Burns. Mike, Michael Wright got it first, though. Oh, oh, did he? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael. Michael Wright. He is a he is a remote. I mean, he is a uh, certified. Oh, uh, 107. Pilot. Yeah. Yeah, well, Captain Ray. If well, you want to introduce, if you want to introduce Tom, uh, we'd be glad. You know, to I, I I'd be more than happy to introduce Tom because uh, I've been watching Tom. He's one of those guys for for you all that are familiar with those guys. And, and Tom is he works for the uh, FDNY. I think I got that right. And uh, he's got a lot of experience flying drones and. We're going to welcome him in right now, and he'll. And he's a great photographer too, by the way. He is, yeah, Tom. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate it. How's everybody doing this evening? Everybody in the chat, how you guys doing? Oh, we having fun. It's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon in South Louisiana. I know it's good up in New York. So hey, we're we're having fun and just going to talk about some drones. And you know, of course, our show Tom gives you a chance to. I know you're on some streams, but you know, our show gives you a chance to talk about yourself and. Uh, a little bit and 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 sometimes it's hard to talk about yourself when you're another you know like when you're doing a show but tell us a hey, we'd love to know as much about you or a little bit about you or you know whatever you want to share tom well uh gentlemen uh first thanks for having me on i really appreciate it uh it's a great community i think that's what draws us all to it right is the community aspect of this uh hobby is a passion it's also part of my employment so it comes together. Uh, I'm uh, getting ready to make a uh, hit a, a pretty big milestone right now. Uh, uh, Ray, you would definitely appreciate this from being on the job. Um, I uh, just hit 40 on the job oh, with wow. the New York City Fire Department. So That's uh, fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks, man. And, of yeah. course, I, I, I hit a nice number with Social Security, too. So I think it's about time, okay? Uh and then, uh, then I can take up these passions full time. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, I, I've been very uh, fortunate uh, in my career, uh, getting involved with a lot of different aspects in public safety and things like that. Uh, to where several years back, I I was able to get involved with robotics and uh, our job's approach to leveraging this kind of tool set. Uh, and we immediately recognized uh, the huge uh, force protection element that was derived from using UASs, uh, being able to keep eyes on our members. Uh, you know, we're in a, I'm in a large metropolitan area, so we have a very dense population. Uh, as a result, uh, fire service in the city has to be extremely aggressive. Yeah. Uh, we have to, everything we do is interior attack. Uh, you know, you, you got to really get control in a dense urban area as quickly as possible. And one of the things we have to do is when, when members arrive on the scene, uh, we get members up on the roof. So there's a position right. on the apparatus that members known as an OV or outside vent member. They got to get up to the roof because in all likelihood, we're going to have to probably cut some ventilation in the roof to 
exhaust all those gases and the smoke uh, and the heat. Uh, now, when members are operating on the roof, it's usually a smoky situation and, and we lose complete visibility of our members operating up there. And a real game changer uh, that we were able to, to employ was the first Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual wow. cool. with the thermal imaging camera. Yep. The second I was able to show my peers, the other chiefs on my job, uh, what we were able to see, it was an immediate acceptance right. of the technology. When we were able to put that drone up in the sky, you know, the incident command is dealing with so much, so much stuff going on. Uh, mm -hmm. It's information overload these days with everything coming in. So what you want to do is you want to measure all that info coming in for its value and its worth yeah. and make sure that gets earmarked in front of the incident commander as quickly as possible. So once we were able to throw uh, the unmanned aerial system in the air with that thermal imaging camera, yeah. which we've been using thermal imaging cameras for, for several decades now on the job, but now that we had one that was aerial, and right. once we were able to superimpose that visual image yeah. mm -hmm. on the thermal image, and you could spot every member operating on that roof. But was, what was really telling was, depending on which color arrangements we were using, we could also see the hot spots under the roof. Sure. Mm -hmm. wow. And yeah. when you talk about, we, we, we have a saying on the job, keeping names off the wall. We have a big memorial wall yeah. with right. over 1,200 members on it, right? And the whole aspect of the job is keeping members off the wall. Okay. You want to you wanna retire from the job and walk out. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, when, when we're able to see those signatures below the members operating, and then be able to withdraw those members from those danger zones and seeing those danger zones then become actual collapse incidents yep. right then and there, man, that was the payoff right there. Yeah. Uh, and then when you Saving look at lives. the Saving lives. Tom, Saving Tom, lives. Tom, Tom, okay. Tom I, have a, I have a question since you brought up the wall. Uh, let me, I mean, and this may be, where were you for 9-11? uh i was i was at headquarters i you know i i mean that was my job at the that point in time okay uh, okay you know Are you went at a station uh no 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 i was at headquarters at that point in time uh you know and uh you know it, it, it's a day that uh we look back on uh probably every waking moment just to yep. say how can we do things better how can we yeah, exactly. you know but uh, uh, Johnny, I'll tell you how we look at it, okay, Johnny, to, ch to try to bring some sense to it and, and to reconcile uh, with the 343 members we lost that day, plus right. the countless number of police officers and other first responders, was that was actually one of the largest rescue operations we were able to pull off. We, we saved tens of thousands of people that day, okay? So, so that's the way no you know, I, I choose to look at that day. Sure. Uh, you know, and I lost a lot of buddies that day. And, uh, you know, when f the unfortunate part of it, Johnny, is uh, uh, we're still losing friends. Okay. Right. As a result. Right. So, you know, we on the job is striving to leverage technology wherever possible. All right. Uh, I'm uh, my, my role right now is deputy chief information officer on the job. And, you know, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm extremely yeah. honored to be in that position and to be involved in the technology and to be the the senior advisor on uh, technology sure. for the robotics group. But we now have a full-fledged company, uh, an operating company that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and their job is to put these birds in the sky. Is there for okay. training, Tom? A lot of us are training. Uh, we are constant. Well, the thing with the job is we are constantly training. Right. Okay. Uh, so, you know, to give you a, a little bit of lowdown, you know, last year, uh, EMS uh, responded to probably 1.8 million calls, okay, total in the city. Uh, we have a couple of hundred thousand uh, fire-related incidents. Uh, companies are training constantly. Uh, that's yeah. the only way they stay on top of things is training. So when it comes to the drones, yeah, the guys are always flying, but they're also, they're also trained in this sector, Okay, uh, we worked with NIST, the National Institute of Science and Technology, mm -hmm. which most people don't realize is part of the Department of Commerce. Okay, oh. we worked with them to develop uh, drone public safety drone training, uh, you know, building out 
course courses that basically any department could put into play you know a series of five gallon buckets with targets inside the buckets mm -hmm. arranged either on pvc piping or lumber and having them at various angles and having the operators fly a course and get on station and on target as quickly as possible and moving from one target to the next to the next to show a level of proficiency but not just in the air on every aircraft that we own in order to understand that each aircraft operates differently right yep. so you know if you've ever flown you know i got a buddy eddie in the room right now eddie eddie nunez a good buddy of mine i fly with all the time so eddie's got an inspire too he's a he he's a uh, uh fpv flyer he's got mavics and phantoms right and yep. eddie will tell you too flying each one of those aircrafts is a different feel different. it's a different touch it's and now when you add on to that uh, us as uh you know enthusiasts flying for fun All okay right. it's a different world now when you're in the shit so to speak you're in the heat of it uh and you're flying for life safety uh it takes on a whole new uh level of stress for that remote pilot in charge so the important thing is training 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 it's just right. like I say to even even all us hobbyists here, and I'm a part 107, part 61. You you, you need to pre-flight. You need to That's look right. at that. Every time I get on, on station or go to fly someplace, the first thing I think about is, what's the tallest thing around me? Okay, <laughs> yeah. let me go in there and return to home. Man, I have a video I'd like to show one day that I can't, okay? But how close I came. And it's, I think we've all had experiences there, but that's a wake up, right? You can only rely so much on technology. If you don't set that technology up to succeed in the first place, it's going to let you down big time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I do when I get out there, I set that return to home altitude. Very yep. first thing. What's around me? What do I have to worry about? And do I have any airspace restrictions? Sure. I don't want to fly yep. into a bubble. We know that never works out for you. No. Okay, since me personally, I don't have a, a continental U.S. COA to fly anywhere I want. I have to be cognizant of what's around me and whether I can legally fly there. Okay, so these are the things that you always have to pay attention to. And you know, is no, the camera <laughs> set up? Is is there a card in there? Are you formatted? You know, all those. Things. Oh yeah. You know, you yeah, know, it's, it's make a so check. good that you brought this up, Tom. It really is. You know, because people get lax. They really do. Pilots get lax. I, I've been lax a couple of times where I didn't do my pre-flight or check my return to home yeah. height, you know, yeah. and it's great that you brought that up. Well, that's uh, we we know, you know, even in, in the public safety realm, when you get lax, you get hurt. OK, uh, it's just like taking for granted, man. My whole thing in, in the part 107 realm where I was making a nice uh, bit of coin was uh, out on Long Island, whether it was Treasure Cove out in, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the way out on the island at Riverhead. Or, Riverhead, yeah. Right. So the various marinas, uh, you know, if somebody was selling a boat, hey, Tom, can you, can you take some drone footage of my boat? Because guess what boat owners want to see? They want to see the boat yeah. in operation. First off, they want, they want video of the boat pulling away from the, from the dock. They want to see the boat underway. They want to see how it planes in the water. They want to see the wake it leaves behind. And they want to see the boat pulling back into the dock. Yeah. They figure if they see the boat bouncing off the dock two or three times, they might be suspect of some hidden damage. So all that was a blast. But realize while you're flying underway, you got a hand catch. Right. Okay? And you better become proficient at that. Or go buy yourself a fillet glove mm -hmm. if you do any fishing. You know, you need that fillet glove when, you know, at the end of that long day after a few beers, right. you better have a fillet glove on, okay? Um, or me, I used to wear a meat cutter's glove, you know, because I yeah, was yeah, exactly, up. exactly, and and that's what you should if you're thinking about hand catching on a moving boat, start mm -hmm. with that, okay? But I had to get good at hand catching, and you know, you don't get good at hand catching without a few mistakes, right? <laughs> okay. So exactly. you just want to make sure they're all there. It's it's good at the end of the day. But I'll tell you, that 
that was a, a good gig and I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I actually turned somebody else on to it to do it because I didn't actually have the time. Uh, but it was like once the word got out at the marina. Oh, you, you were the and, guy. Yeah, you I was the guy. I was the guy. Uh, yep. So that was a lot of fun. But one funny story was I had actually gone out to a friend's boat over a holiday weekend. And I brought the first version of the DJI goggles, the big white whale, mm -hmm. right? And I took them out. We, we were out on the dock. And I let, you know, threw the bird up in the sky. I, I, it was the Mavic. And they were just getting a kick out of it. I had them sit on the dock box, especially sitting standing on the dock oh. was not a good thing. So I had them sit down. Uh, and then I'm flying. And I turn around and I look. And there was a whole line of people going down the dock. It was like I was giving out pony rides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, you know, I had a blast myself because that like 14 people got to experience this. Wow. And no doubt, two or three of them became drone enthusiasts, and they're probably watching this right now. So there you go. That's a good deal. Yeah. Okay. It's a small world, right? Hey guys, it is a small hey, world. Captain Ray, let's uh, let's do our second question, Tom. You want to take a break for one second? We'll put sure. this up and we'll get. Uh, this is our second question. Who holds the responsibility to ensure all crew members participating in operation are not impaired by drugs or alcohol? Is it a remote pilot in command, A, B, the FAA, or C, the site supervisor? Easy question, but it definitely is on, on a lot of... Yeah, that's pretty easy, that one. We'll see who gets it, though. Yep. No, look at... Look at. <laughs> no, okay. Well, so let a few more answers come in. Wait a second. You shouldn't and give I'll it away Brad, too I'll soon. Of no, course, Ray, we want to see the ones that get it wrong, Ray. That's who we want yeah, to see. We don't, okay? we, don't see we don't definitely want to see them get it wrong. <laughs> it's it's kind of just a little simple thing. We Every, do. Everybody's getting it right. Congratulations good, to you all. We but we're gonna, uh, I got the uh, Tom, if you hold up a second and then we'll uh, y'all can join. Tom, I, uh, one little fact that I mean, I don't know a lot of people. I, I was a firefighter for seven years when I got out of high school, right? And I wish I would have stayed, of course, looking back, but uh. You know, too late now to look it back. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. But uh, let's bring uh, Chuck. Chuck is back there eating some shrimp and crawfish. I, uh, I don't know if he knows how to be a crawfish, he said. <laughs> no pizza. How you doing, Chuck? Welcome. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Tom, how you doing? Good, good you, Chuck. Brother. How you been, brother? Good, man. Good. good. I got to get downstate, down your way soon. Well, we got definitely. Up I was upstate last week. Yeah, yeah. we got some questions yeah. we asked, but we'll ask both of you at the same time, you know, so – uh Chuck, uh, I know you've been sitting back there a little while, and uh, Tom, I, I, man, great story, I, and and I'll tell you what, uh, I I love, you know, man, I'll tell you what, thank you for your service for that fire department there too. Appreciate thank it. You, thank Tom, you, Tom, and and you do obviously you got a got a great job, forty years, you know that's a big tribute, and you know, well, it was a hard thing for me to retire. I know what you're going through. So Ray, I'll I'll, I'll make one comment, then it's all yours, Chuck, uh, but. Uh, uh, the big difference between the jobs, Ray, and you'll appreciate that. My son just uh, recently retired from the NYPD. Okay. Uh, he actually beat me out the door. I don't know how the hell that happened, but uh, the difference between his job and my job is on my job, I tell you how many years I got on the job. Right. On his job, he tells you how much he's got left. Okay. So that's the difference between the jobs. So my hat's off to you, Ray. Well, I'll okay. tell you right I think now. you had the harder one there, bro. No. Once you get used to retirement, you're going to love it. Oh, no, you no. That, yeah, it's it definitely definitely my uh, uh, my my chosen career. Right? <laughs> and uh, then, I mean, definitely. And then we could start doing uh, vlogs, traveling around. Like Ray, I'm going RVing, and, and you know those drones are going to be able – I'm going to have little hatches in the roof of that RV, baby. Okay? That's what's going right. to happen. Wow. Good. Sounds cool. So, Chuck, Chuck, tell us a little bit about this new travel thing. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell us and share? Well, I've had a camera in my hand since I was in seventh grade. That's when I got my first camera and took photography in seventh grade and developed. Remember the smell of fix? I can't get that out of my head. Oh, but, man, um, working in chemicals. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it wasn't until after college, after engineering school, that I got my first camcorder. And then I've been holding one of them forever, but never got serious until... Yeah, my wife and I would travel. We've been we've been traveling since we were boyfriend girlfriend living together in sin and stuff. And uh, 
seeing all you know the whole United yeah. States wandering around. And um, when when the Mavic Pro showed up on the scene, I was like, I gotta have one of those. That's gonna go with me everywhere. I'm gonna film Game everything changer. you do. Yeah, because yeah, it was like portable and like the Phantoms. And I didn't even care about the Phantom. But that the game changer was the Mavic Pro. So I quickly grabbed one of those guys and I've been flying ever since. But yeah, this is so, so I was flying all that cinematic stuff and, and trying to capture really cool moments and put stuff together on YouTube. And, and I forgot about actually engaging with the audience. So recently my wife and I, she, she started to get interested in it when I started to make stuff that actually was good to watch. She'd watch it. Wow. It's pretty good. <laughs> you know, but, um, so then she wanted to get involved with it. So we started vlogging just for fun on her birthday back in January. And yeah. now we're going to change direction of the channel. And, you know, Kovacian Dronography, we're going to spin off like a show on there. Um, cool. That's nice. cool. She named it. And, and yeah, we're going to like, uh, we're going to kick it up. I really like, like my model is Ferris Bueller, in case you were wondering. <laughs> it's like I always okay. considered Ferris Bueller to be the quintessential vlog movie. It's like he talks, Matthew Broderick talks to the camera. Yep. He brings you in, you know, and even at the end, you know, you're still here. Yeah. Go home. The fourth, right. Go. Breaking that fourth uh, dimension, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's important yeah. to us. And that's yeah. what we want to do. So we're, we're working on doing that. And I think that's what's, that's going to be a really fun project for us. And we'll see where it takes us. Cause like, I, I, I love the drone community. You guys have been great to me. It's like, I, I couldn't have done anything that I've done up to now without the help of you guys. It's like, Chuck, uh, Chuck, so are you going to, uh, I mean, yours is, it's, pre-filmed though right i mean you're not doing a live right what do you mean um, your show or uh, i mean is it tape i mean you record it and then play it or the um oh the vlogs yeah yeah okay yeah it's all I mean, it's all it's it's all filmed i mean there are a couple of it's all pre-recorded right yeah 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 so i mean i i partner with um i have a collab with um the k-spot in in thailand he and i do it a vlog or well, i'm sorry live stream every live couple stream, weeks. yeah yeah and you're also on with art right art go you co yeah yeah i'm having a lot of fun art. with art oh he's a great yeah. guy he's in here tonight isn't he he is in right. yeah, here well, doing art? he's in yeah there he is right there he's saying he's saying hello to about a uh, million people right there a few of his friends <laughs> yeah he's just a terrific guy so yeah he he gets my saturday night and we have a lot of fun together so that's that's pretty fun but the whole thing's been really cool and i'm just getting i'm getting better and better with with filmmaking and and flying the drone so i actually get really pretty shots and use them now it's now it's more b-roll for me for the vlog stuff right. and then learning how to be fun with cameras you know and, and set up the shots and like like there's a tailgate shot at the end of my last video where I, it took like three different camera shots to mm -hmm. put it together when I'm putting the bags just in the truck so nobody thinks about it but there's there's a lot of like Ken Heron showed how you do all that stuff it's all it's it's all movie making yeah, magic you, you take you, you take a lot of it for granted right Chuck until you actually until have you to do, do it. it yeah, yeah it's a lot of work but damn is it fun to work. do that because you, you have it in your head like okay this is what I want to do and then I get all the pieces and put them to, and then I get to put them together and post later and then pick all my music and and music's a big part of my stuff too because that's you could have pretty crappy video, but if you have a really good soundtrack, it'll make even the mediocre video seem music really ads. Good. Yeah, yeah, music sound editing is yeah, music sound ads, editing yeah. is key. Set set the mood. Yeah. yeah, it's really important to me. I I mean I think we you all know, work that Chuck, you, the one funny thing was like when we started also doing little videos when we got our e bikes, right? Take take the ride with us on our e bike, right? So I, I put a hero Hero Five session on my wife's bike, facing you know pointed forward, mine facing backwards towards her. Uh -huh. I put a camera on the front of the bike, and then I put a three sixty. Oh. <laughs> and, and then I realized at the end of the day, I had to go through all it's that damn work. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. god. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it, I have five it, cameras it on that. I have five cameras with me on that lot of on that last that. trip, and um, that, that's a lot of cycles you burn in there. And so, uh, yeah, there was some really fun stuff and the edited nice all up one, and put, man. when Lori and I were going back and forth and I, I'd have the camera on her. She had a camera on me and stuff. It was just, yeah. Okay, and isn't it great that she's doing that with you? I mean, did you, did she kind of shy away from that at first or was it? Yeah, it was all my hobby at first. I was just, I was filming our trips and stuff and then, right. and then right. she just got sucked into it on her own. Now she's, <laughs> she's, it, right. it's her idea. Right. I mean, I, I didn't say you have to do this with me. She's like, I want to do this with you. So it, it and that's huge. So to have her involved yeah. and we're a team now, this is really cool. But 
I, Johnny, I think you asked about what what I'm using to edit with. Yeah, what 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 are you you? I mean, what is your? I'm using DaVinci Resolve 17. Oh, okay. Um, I have the studio version and the really crazy keyboard with the wheel and stuff. And yeah, I'm not great at using it all, but I'm I'm kind of one of those believers. Like I'll grow into stuff. It, I'll I'll do as much as I can with my equipment that I have, and I'll grow into it as best I can. Because if it's I don't have philosophy. it, I can't. If I don't yeah. have it, I can't. I can't be the best I can be if I don't have the best gear. So I'd rather just invest in myself and grow into it. Yeah, um, sure. Tom, I actually have a uh, had a video. I I, I was going to ask you if it's like that. You, uh, the Pine Creek Canyon. Can I play a little bit of that? Or, or did you? Oh, you, sure. Did, yeah. Did you yeah. shoot that Again, on this TV? That was the DJI FPV. Okay. Yeah, that was okay. Uh, and I shot that with the motion controller. Really? Yeah. It was hilarious because I'm sitting on the tailgate of a pickup truck, mm -hmm. okay, with the wife, and I'm flying, and my wife just starts laughing. Man, that is amazing. And, and I have the goggles on, and I'm like, what are you laughing at? She said, did you just go over a ridge because you just picked your feet up? <laughs> okay. So I was like, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that's just exactly right, do. right around now. I think I lifted my feet like, whoa. And, so, and she just started laughing at me. Like so you hit, you hit the brakes when you're in a driver in a your passenger seat, right? When you, when somebody else is driving. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, are you flying? Are you flying? I don't in, do that. Um, she does that. <laughs> are you flying in, in, in a normal or sport? I guess, or, or were you? That's a that? sport, uh, a high roll. Man. Mode. Okay. Yeah, that was sport high roll mode. Yeah, that's I think the mode I'm going to use the most too once I get a little more. Yeah, for, I've, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty of doing what you did though. My wife's laughed at me because I'll be flying with the goggles on and I'll be like ducking and stuff. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I don't do the Stevie Wonder as much. Okay. Yeah. But it was funny just sitting there, my feet dangling. All of a sudden, the feet come flying up. She just busted yeah. out laughing. <laughs> and then I caught myself doing it later on. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. This, this, is, this is an where, amazing where, video. It really, it is, really good. It's very video. cinematic. I mean, it's actually Tom's captured the kind of stuff that I want to capture with my FPV drone. It's exactly what I intend to do with the thing. Do you, have, you know, I, I look at these. Look, I have a crack deal. His name is Eddie Nunez. Uh, Eddie's been trying to get me into <laughs> yeah, FPV Eddie. for a while. Okay. He's an FPV. Uh, but you want to see, you got to definitely check out Eddie's channel because if you want to see really smooth cinematic, yeah. that's what Eddie's into also. Uh, but, you know, this was, I, I love this place. This place is Red Rock Canyon, by the Man. way. Uh, if, yeah. if you if you guys go to Las Vegas, do yourselves a favor, rent a car at least just one day that you're there, and realize this mecca of wonder you're in the middle of. I know. Okay, uh, it goes to waste because people get stuck in the casino and think there's nothing else around. Oh no, that 13 mile loop is awesome. That 13 mile loop will provide you no less than nine different places to fly from, and if you're ambitious and have a high clearance vehicle. Many more than that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I took a Lamborghini a through there. I took a hell. It wasn't a flight. I didn't have high clearance. I had a Lamborghini and then a Ferrari that I rolled through <laughs> wow. there. That is yeah, no, no, you just take the loop with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, with a drone, that would have been awesome to film the. You like, can fly here drone. legally. In fact, I was flying the DJI FPV, and my wife said to me, because she's my VO, of course, always with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. She She said to me, there's two ranges coming our way. And I was like, okay. And I was flying, flying. And then I started to bring it in. I lifted wow, up look the at that. Wow. And one of the ranges right away said, is that the brand new FPV? Right. And I was like, yeah. He goes, yeah, you can fly here. I've been waiting to see one of those. So, right. you know, cool. you, you got to always check. Now you can't fly in national parks. No. But there's a lot of national conservation areas that just ask. And, Nine out of ten times, it's usually okay to fly there. You that just have to ask. Tom, it, Tom, it, it, Tom, it looks, like, looks like you're hooked, and obviously uh, you like that drone. Look, that look, the FPV drone is a blast. Okay, now as far as getting cinematic footage, that takes a bit of effort, Chuck. Right? Yeah. To keep that, that thing smooth. I'm just but having fun what? right now. I still suck at the cinematic side of that, but it, let it's me really tell fun. you, man, that motion controller i think and i'm wondering why you know sources uh close have told me that when they were reviewing the the fpv before it was released mm -hmm. that the motion controller in fact did work uh 
when I'm sorry, when the Mavic Air 2S was being tested uh -huh. by a friend, I know what you're saying. Uh, it, the motion controller did work. With it did, it. and the goggles did too. Right. So in, in the preliminary man, software. Let yeah. me, Chuck. That motion controller gives me that feeling like I'm holding my SLR and controlling it. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm able to compose and focus a lot easier than you know pinching. Really, with that one motion controller, it's more natural to me. Uh, flying light sport uh, aircraft, things like that. That stick is much more natural of a feel. Okay. The only thing you're adding into that is your rudder pedal. So, you know, that's you, it's a much more natural feel to it. You, you could be a Maverick. No, well, don't you, be a Maverick. Don't be a Maverick. <laughs> I, I haven't used the motion controller. It's 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 all linked up and paired up and I used it once. Oh man, it's so a blast. When I'm you just... go yeah, sports mode, of course, uh go into high roll. You have a lot of flexibility there. And it will keep your bird a lot safer than dropping into manual. I'm not ready for uh, manual. I've, I've tried liftoff and I crash every one. So, Chuck, you hadn't flown it at all? I mean, what? Full fledged your FEV? No, no, God, no. Sport mode only. Like, I go back to that <laughs> schoolyard. I keep going back to the schoolyard and, and I've been slowly. Mm -hmm. it, it makes me sweat like I am now. And it's, you know, <laughs> it, I get so nervous flying it. I'm going to wreck the thing. But it's it. I've been flying through this this course where it's a field with a bunch of soccer nets without the nets on, just the pose. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of like my. I'm working on going through that course and trying to get used to the way it handles. But that's just what. But I found the sticks are really goofy. I might try it with the motion controller next time and see. Well, like, uh, you know, Chris, the sticks you know. seem goofy to you because they don't do the same thing you're used to on your camera drone. Right. Okay. So, yeah, so well, it's, re I'm still remember it's like a Mavic, but a really fast Mavic. That's the problem. So I haven't, yeah. I haven't changed the spring so that your throttles all the way down like you would in manual mode and all that right, stuff. Right, just, right, and, but, and, um, and, yeah. yeah. And and when you have the motion controller, here, here was the screwy thing that got me the first time, and it was funny because my wife was like, oh, "Is this really the the bird for you?" Because I couldn't land it. Okay. Right with the motion controller. Now the sticks, no problem. It's like, what is wrong with me? So yeah, this I have is the goggles on and I, I bring really it in. I can't do it okay. I bring it in and it's close to me. So I'm going to lift up the goggles and I'm trying to land it. Right. Nothing. No. Nothing. Nothing. Did you hand catch I'm it like, like I did and couldn't turn it I'm off? Like, no, I tried. I went over, what? I grabbed it and it was like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's you like, like no, you're not cut your arm sideways. off. I'm like, yeah, okay, you better go with the gym more. You're going to turn me off that. Yeah. And then I realized, no, the problem is, look, nine out of ten times the problem is between the seat and the keyboard, okay? And that's exactly where it was. Uh, when I put the goggles down, I realized there's a target in there when you're using the motion controller. And you got to get the motion controller target back in that okay. box in order to allow landing. Oh. And that's when I'm stopping. Okay. All right. And I'm well, like, got it. Now we know. Now, now we know. of course, after I put it down, my wife knew I figured it out because I started cursing myself out like, you asshole, you didn't see this. And it's right away. <laughs> I didn't figure it out. She I goes, oh, you figured it out, there. huh? So congratulations, the, Jody. Yeah. But, you I know, that's the, book. the motion control is a blast. Well, Chuck, yeah, I got a little, a, uh, I got a a little video that I pulled up of, of yours. Uh, let, let, you mind if I play it? You can play anything you want. It's all legit. Yeah, all right. Safe. <laughs> I will not come after you. I might thank you, though. Well, let's see what one strikes. On. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> you have epidemic sound, right? Because my stuff's all epidemic. I'm sorry. I did the wrong one. Here we go. Cool. Are you, you got a still? Or you not... That was you all done with a... no picture yet. I don't see a picture, no. I hear yeah. it though. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's that was setting the mood. Uh, I think I think I said hello to Chris Hope, but Chris Hope was in the house. Johnny and DD, how you doing? Go ahead. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna to find, I'm gonna try to find it again for you, Chuck. I'm sorry. It's okay, but Matt Cundrison too. Hey, Matt. I, I clicked off the wrong. I got too many you, buttons. On you know the other the other thing that we ask every every guest on the show, and this is to both of you. Is, if you had one drone and only one drone to keep, 
or buy, which drone would that be? I already have it. I have two of them. My Mavic 2 Pro. Okay. Times two. Yep. And Tom, what about you? Uh, the Mavic 3. Oh, the Mavic 3. You're waiting for that one. Yeah. Uh, I haven't found the perfect drone yet. <laughs> and, I haven't outgrown the Mavic 3. Between, so between, between you and me, I don't plan on finding the perfect drone yet. I plan to make this a career search, okay? There you so, go. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm going to buy every one that they release, but hey, I'll give it a try. Right. No, I, I really, I, I think right now probably one of the best is the the Air 2S that I don't own. You don't? Uh, oh, you don't I own? Do own? I do own the Air 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a Mavic 2 Pro. I have a, a Phantom 4 Pro. Okay. And I've gotten to fly the Matrice 210 RTK. Oh, it's a beast. Uh, oh, it's okay. like flying through mud. <laughs> okay, when you used to sticks on a on, on a Mavic Two Enterprise, okay, uh, yeah, the Matrice is like flying through mud. But you know, um, I I really look the Mavic the Mavic chassis. I think is is really was a game changer, like you said, Chuck. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That for... Mavic Pro to me was a game changer. That was something I could fold up and throw in my camera bag. Yeah, now, my I camera that... bag was always with me right. okay yeah no, brother. that's it right there right i mean <laughs> and that slips right in let me just slow this up right now well that's his that's I'm his that's his air I'm, too right right that's your I'm, air too i'm, I'm a creature of comfort say. now yeah if it doesn't pack up small and to fit into something that rolls it ain't coming with me anymore exactly but, even okay. the fpv but, but, the fpv is kind of a one is nice too <laughs> oh you know what i just sold my my mavic mini Okay, to a buddy on the job who okay. just wanted to get his feet wet. Yep. And I, I said, Well, it. I got the perfect one for you. You know, he got a of course he got a first song and a dance. And he's already out there with the kids playing with it. So great. You That's know awesome. it, 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 you can get people hook, line, and sinker with these things, man. Exactly. That's why I say it's crack, and you know that's why it's I call the Eddie crack. Newton's my crack it dealer. Is, especially okay. if you're already into photography and videography at all. Oh, and, and you then, know what? It's another point of view. It's another platform to right. leverage, and you know, I'm just, I'm just grateful that I'm, I have the ability to share split seconds of my experiences with other people. It is. Uh, it, exactly. It's just, I, I get a kick out of it. That's, you know, I, I've worked as a paid photographer in a lot of different uh, areas. You know, from boudoir and lingerie photography to event uh, to pro oh. sports. Uh, it's just being able to convey and compose an image and get it out there and, and get somebody to look at it the way you meant it to be looked at. Uh, that still jazzes me up and I still get a kick out of that. It, it's like you said, you had a camera since you were seven. I, I was handed a camera in, in the service, uh, while I was doing something else and, and the photographer's mate asked me to take a, a few shots of him in the open bay of the, of the, of our bird. Uh, and then he woke me up in my rack that next morning after he developed stuff. And he says, yeah, here's a, and, and he gave me a, an F series Nikon and two lenses and said, whenever you get a chance up there, take mm -hmm. shots. And from that day on, man, I've been hooked. So I, I, I've been shooting for 40 plus years. And it, that's that these drones are just an extension of that. Yeah, they, they are, they are. And yeah, and then when you blend it in with ground footage, oh, like yeah. I, I, yeah, it was one of the first things I decided I wanted to do was blend the two together. Chuck, I got I got your video. Let's see if we can uh, play a little Speaking bit of, of ground it. footage. Take two. Take two. There we go. Yep. This was a great video, Chuck. Oh, thanks. It was like... Um, it was it was our wettest crappiest day of the trip, and it turned out to be the most fun. <laughs> and it was the most fun to film too. Well, it's a rainy day, so we're gonna go do some brewery hopping. We're gonna start off at Catskill Brewing. Not like not like driving and drinking. And this is the new brewery for us. So <laughs> my wife, oh, she cracks me up. <laughs> I look. <laughs> oh, we're yeah. doing, so what? Is a pond in front of us. So it would be nice if it was a nice, dry, sunny 
to trust me, but it seems like we don't get those for some reason when we go to the breweries. No, it's a smushy day. Is that movie yeah, a smushy day? Oh, bridge porn. Time for some bridge porn. Bridge porn. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> there we go. This was just a little one though. The, actually, the um, the covered bridge is actually pretty cool. That was that was a lot of bridge fun. Porn. Wow. There's something about co covered bridges. There's just something about them. Yeah, you, you should skip ahead to the. This is the Catskill oh, Bridge. Oh, that's like. A, I say, Chuck, about. Uh, do you know about? Well, let me say. Right, fact, fact, fact. So there, it's indexed. It's all indexed. My yeah, right there. We haven't done a cover bridge. That was a lot of fun to film. We actually had to go back twice because it was it was raining the first time and then it dried oh, yeah. up after brewery. Oh, all right. Yeah, so actually, I made two stops the same day. You could fly that FPV drone through there. That's the living. If I had props, bridge. I forgot my props. <laughs> oh, no. one in here. So this is the Livingston Manor covered bridge, formerly Mott's Flat Bridge, later known as the Vatran. Originally, Town Lattice Trust built by John Davidson in 1860. And this thing is super freaking cool. Look at this bridge. Wow. Yep, he's going through. Here we go. There he goes. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them in nice. upstate, in Vermont and stuff. And there's so much fun to film. Cool. I wanted to throw a little bridge facts in and stuff and, and kind of work. I like in. that. Yeah, I like that. Sure. Nice drony. <laughs> that is beautiful. You're doing good, Chuck. The sounds, all the sounds in there were from me filming with the, the pocket. I had all the audio, like the, the, the frogs beeping and all that kind of stuff is all incorporated at all with the music. So there's like a little bit of a vibe of where, where we were when we, when we filmed. Man, that, that could be a postcard right there. It is beautiful. You know, I just get a kick out of the fact that we now walk around with production studios ready to ready to roll at any time, right? I yep. mean, I have you know, so much have gear with me. It's that, insane. Yeah. <laughs> I have so much gear. I, I decided to walk through the bridge and then yeah, show the laminated arches and stuff. But um, you know, I'm sort of blessed, you know, to have a drone with me at. At most of the time now. Yeah. So my two my two go tos are that the Mavic Two Pro and then the Pocket and then the um, the action is just great for anything. I stick that on the roof of the truck. I have a magnetic yeah. mount that I made out of a CD antenna magnet and um, stick it on the roof. You know what <laughs> you might want to try is uh, nice brewing company. Thanks. Chuck, that uh, was amazing. And I'll tell you what, and, and y'all visit Chuck's so channel, cool. and you know, right, and so uh, he, I think now. You, you've done two yeah, of them so far, right, Chuck? Cool place. Um, um, there's four parts to that that trip in the Catskills. There's actually four vlogs. Yeah, it was so long. I didn't want to put like a forty-something minute thing out. I thought people would just fall asleep. So I broke it up into four bits. There were I, more bites. I, I put I put a, a question in the chat. You know, what do you guys think the ideal length for a video should be? Anybody want to? It, it depends. It depends how engaging you are. Because like, if 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 I thought three minutes was about max from for me, mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, I I would I would say look in, in the in the medium that we're working in right now, anything above ten minutes, you lost me. I don't have that attention span anymore. So yeah, you know, these short episodic. I I love you know, like you said, you broke it up into four parts. I'll come back. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, I was just watching something. I'm a new t Toyota Tacoma owner. So I've been watching Tacoma vlogs mm -hmm. all over the place. And, you yep. know, I've, I've watched this 500 mile trek across the Pony Express route. And they broke that up into like eight, eight episodes. They hooked me. Uh, you know, right. that's good. Not that, you know, Chuck, not that I didn't watch them all in a row. I binge watched the damn thing. But if you would have put that in one long video, you'd feel like you're trapped would, in front of the I TV. I would have looked right computer. away and said, that's yeah. how long? Yeah, no, I don't right. have time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah. Tom, I think, yeah, that's an excellent point. You know, I, I yeah. think for me, three to five minutes maybe, and I don't even yeah. know if that's, you know, yeah. you can go back to your analytics and look at it, of course, and I know, yeah. Chuck, you can yeah. look at that, but... No, you uh, see the drop-off, yeah, but, but like the rainy day one, I didn't want to like... Um, I didn't want to break it up anymore, and I did because it was like just a really it was it was a day, and and I 
Yeah. It, it, yeah. To, maybe it's just me. The thing I'm concerned about is when you watch something yourself as a creator, I mean, of course you're going to like it. You're a creator. You're going to like what you created. You wind but, up putting too much in though. Yeah. And you got to be it's, brutal when you get to the, the cutting room floor. You got to be brutal. Yeah, you got to be you know, you know, you hate, you hate to edit things out because you know that they're so good. I, it, that's a wonderful shot. That's just, what, yeah. <laughs> they're going to love it. But yeah, but how they, much of it can they love? Like, right? you know, but the other thing is, is Chris Hope. Is, <laughs> Chris Hope is in the chat. And and Chris Hope's two minutes of hope is something I look forward to every month. I really do. That's and cool. kudos to you, Chris. Yeah. And guys, uh, you know, uh, well, Ray, we, we, y'all asked a question. Did we ask about your perfect spot? Ideal location. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What, what's, what would be both of you know your your dream, dream location? Flat. I'm dreaming of getting to Scotland in September. It's on my high list, and I might have to buy a Mavic or a Mini Two to to fly there as much as I want to. Right. Because of the rules, but Scotland, we're supposed to cool. go. And darn it all, I'm going to get there, and I'm going to have all my gear with me packed, and it's going to be an extravaganza. Um, what sure. about you, Iceland? Iceland. Yeah, oh, that was, that's high on my list too, Tom. I understand. I that mean, one, you but. know. I, I look at it this way. If you're going to throw someplace on your bucket list, it might as well contain everything you can possibly throw in there at once, right? Yeah. From volcanic to ice to, you know, fauna yeah. and flora. Uh, and it's got a decent nightlife, I heard, too. So, uh, But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's probably one of the spots. But for me, uh, I'll be very generic. Anywhere where there aren't people, the wilderness. Right. I, I, I get a... The one thing I've said countless times, you know, out, out in the Southwest, it's so vast. Right. But what's amazing behind every turn, there's another treasure. And that's the way I look at the wilderness. I mean, and then when you can get a bird's eye view, oh, man, that's just oh, yeah. uh, the icing well, on the cake. Well, you right brought there. it up. You know, it's, it's so it's amazing that, you know, you can I mean, you can make a you can make a film almost, you know, like it, it's just it, it's crazy. <laughs> You know, I never would have dreamed that. I mean, I'm not a great editor, so that's a whole nother story. But, you know, to see some stuff that people do, I mean, it's just amazing. So Can we go over I, that last question, Johnny. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, we will. Well, I'll put it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things uh, I carry now a uh, think tank uh, airport international bag. It's a four roller bag. It's guaranteed to fit in the overhead. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in there, I'm carrying. Uh, a Nikon Z6 mirrorless full frame. Okay. I have two lenses with me, one on the camera body, one off. I carry the DJI FPV drone mm -hmm. and five batteries. Yep. I carry the Air 2 and five batteries. And then I have uh, two Hero 5 sessions and an Osmo Action in that bag. And then I also have an XPS 15 studio laptop. Uh, and I have an iPad in that bag and it all fits nicely in the bag. The one thing I would suggest if anybody's thinking about traveling with that, go get TSA pre-check. Okay. Uh, right. you don't want to stand on a regular line with that bag. Every time I put it up on the belt, they'll go, out. Oh, you got to take the electronics out. And I go, no requesting a hand check. Thank you. This oh. it's all electronics. I said, yeah, yeah the same through. problem. I think they we all put it through. We all have the same problem. Yeah, they put it through. I'll get to the other side. Somebody will come over. They'll open it up, and I'll get away easy if they have no clue whatsoever because they'll swipe once. They'll run it through the machine. Everything's good on your way. Where I have problems is, is that the Mavic Two? Is that this? Yeah, is that, I get that oh, too. how is that? How much right. is this? How much? And yeah. and my yes, wife is really interested in it. It's my cool, wife though. will roll exactly. her eyes at that point. Yeah, and go. We we're already catch. we're two hours early anyway, but she'll be like, "Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. happens. It happens." So, so what, what, I what get a kick of, out of that. What What do both of you think about the new? Uh, uh, EW ordered a little Femi Mini or the the new. Uh, the Hubson Mini, Mini SC, or I'm, the I'm interested in the Hubson myself because as much as I like the Mini Two, it it lacks a couple of things that I really really want in a drone. Yeah, um, I mean it doesn't have Cinelike, Decinelike, so I have to film in a normal profile. That bugs me, right. but I don't think. But 
DJI's normal profile is nothing to you know shake your your fist at. You it's still fine. got a little wiggle room there, Chuck. Yeah, I can still I can yeah. still bring it up or down a little bit. In yeah. post. But I got you know it, it, I'll tell you what, the, got that, that, the Hubson has the big sensor though. I mean, it's a pretty good size sensor on that thing. Uh -huh. If it's actually going to fly stable, that's the big thing. Will it fly stable? Hell, it crashed what the other day. <laughs> and they, and they, are, they kind of ran it flat on the yeah, battery. And yeah. I'm sure y'all saw the new little SE mini SE special edition. I guess that Walmart is going to be selling. Or it's, you know, yeah, it's a loss that. leader. It's to to suck more people in. It's a money grab, but yeah, it's going to bring definitely more people is into a the money hobby. grab. But It'll you know what? Look, look you, you you have all these knockoffs out there, right? DJI I just figured, them. hey, we'll we'll throw something out there that will kick their butt it's paid for so they they don't have to charge a lot because it's paid for, for. It, the text paid, paid for, for. yeah and and look it's a loss start. lead yeah i'll yeah. give you that first i'll give you that first pint for free if you come to my brewery Chuck. that's crack dealer tactics right there the first but the second free. one's going to cost you right right yeah, yeah. And they'll, the they'll second one's not going to be right yeah you're going to have watch you're going to have mini se owners dive into a Maverick three without realizing what they're oh, yeah. doing because you know <laughs> look they kind of get hooked. Yeah, it won't take long to get hooked. Yeah. I yeah. just hope that um that these new pilots that grab these things follow the rules as best they can. Well, you know, the that, only thing they, concern, Chuck, they probably honestly. put it in the wrong people. I mean, it, you know, that they're going to give it to, I say so many kids and, and I'm not, I don't know. I, yeah. I just think it's going to be in the wrong hands, but you know, I could be wrong, you know, yeah, it's a great drone. I mean, the, the mini is a great drone for a starter drone. I recommend that to so many people. It's, Absolutely. Like Absolutely. my son had a drone and you put it in the right. tree or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I said, you get this mini, get this little mini. I said, you can pick one up, use for a song. And I said, it's probably just about twice as much as what you paid for that thing that's in the tree next to the neighbor's house now. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and you can actually have a camera that you can film with. I mean, like your kid, if he's going to, if, if, the minute your son or daughter sees what they can get with this thing, they're going to be addicted to it, and they're going to yep. want to do more and more with it because it's capable. Right. Instead of See, a little that's crap where, thing that's going on, it's garbage. That's where I think the the mini SE it's going to do flood well. The, flood the schools with them. Yep. Yeah. Flood the schools. Oh, with science the mini class. SE. Yeah. Okay. My, um, my niece. That, my niece is a jazz science teacher. I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, I agree. No, it should no, be Chuck, in school. Right? Yes, it should damn. be in school. Like my niece, Absolutely. my niece was in technology class, and I remember I, when I first had the Spark, and he, she's like, "I said, you want to fly this?" She's like, "Oh, my teacher is one of those. Yeah, let's go fly it." So <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we try to hold this to about an hour, yeah. and uh, you know, because other shows will be coming on and stuff. But hey, uh, you know, we'll we'll give you each a chance. Tom, we'll start with you to to uh, you know, we just want to thank you for taking time out, and it was a great show, man. We had some. Had a lot of people in, and I, I really appreciate it, Captain Ray and I. And Chuck, yep. I appreciate having you on. And, hey, you know, uh, everybody in the chat, you know, hey, subscribe to their channels. And, uh, Tom, if you want to go first. Just, uh, guys, thanks for having having me on. I, uh, I, I enjoy the community, as you can tell. And I think that's what makes it the difference here is that it is a community. Uh, we're, we're learning from each other. I love meets. Of course, we haven't had many as of recent uh but again what i enjoy about the meets is that we all get to converse we share ideas and and you know what i, I don't care how experienced you are in this realm uh if you don't walk away learning something uh from getting a few of us together i, I think you're yeah. doing the wrong thing <laughs> okay yeah. uh, it, it's just a blast i always pick up a, a tip or a trick out of exactly. you know out of these little groups and and i appreciate the opportunity so gentlemen thank you, thank so, you much. so much and chuck? chuck it's always a pleasure to be on with you brother oh likewise Tom. i i learned a lot from you i mean you're an experienced photographer i was just kicking around a camera for years and years and years this it's only <laughs> recent that i got serious it's serious at all so i i see myself and it's all thanks to you guys and everybody in the chat, everybody I, I've talked to on YouTube who's helped me learn tricks and how to be a better creator and filmmaker. And, and the community is, like Tom said, it's just awesome. You guys are great. And I've had a couple of bumpy patches with some people along the way on here. And, and if anybody was on, I'm sorry, you know, but it, it happens. I mean, we're all we're all like passionate and with passions going to come. Yeah you know, tension sometimes, but it's well, so awesome. And you guys are, it's, I love, thanks for having me on. It was a lot absolutely. of fun. You we, know, you know, we had two great guests tonight, Johnny, really. And I'm not just saying it because they're here right now. 
I said it during the week, and I really mean it. You know, well, Herman, thank, uh, thank you both for coming on, and thank you all in the chat for yeah, watching. And, you know, we couldn't do this show without you. Yeah, we want to. We want to. Yeah, support everybody. You know, Monday nights you got Drone Nation with and uh, with Ron Brown and Marcus. Tuesday you got Build a Drone with you, with, and then Philly and Ron comes on after. Wednesday you got Phantom Flight 101. Was Tom here on that? Right? Uh, with usually, yeah. When when work doesn't get in the way, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I, I think, gets in the way a lot. We, I think we had, I think Ray sent you a check to either Herman or Lauren, so they got your check. For oh, the okay, <laughs> good, good. I'll be looking forward to and that. Then, uh, okay. Thursday, Thanks for the pizza out back, too, by the yeah, way. Really Thursday, Thursday night, you got Ken Heron, of course, and then Friday, you know, Kelly Shores was on, already said drone, some, uh, and then it flies on podcast with Michael, Sergio, myself, and Maddie. Uh, and I think Art is on Saturday, right? Saturday, yep. Yeah. Seven you got the drone seekers on Sunday. So there's a lot of shows. Hey, you know, support everybody. I know it's hard to watch, you know, everybody. And of course, after us, uh, Coast What's Coast more Coast important Coast. than the drone community? Yeah. Coast to Coast comes on right after this. So tune into that show. And uh, hey, you know, I also, you I also want to personally invite you, Tom and Chuck, to come to the South Florida drone meetup. It's already scheduled. It's going to be in Jensen Beach on Saturday, April 2nd, 2022. I'm so glad you said 22. Yeah, well, and I, I, did, I, did, I booked all my vacations and everybody for this in the year. chat also. Everybody in the put, chat I did, also. I did want to put this up. Kelly Shores did finalize that. You can go to the website and kind of find out some information about Spin Up. It's on November 6th. And I think he's going to be on Ken Heron tomorrow night. Uh, so he'll, uh, you know, he'll go over all the details of that. Cool. So. And like we say every week, get out there, fly for fun. Have a good time and fly safely and fly legally. All right. Thanks, everybody, and good night.